Okay, this is a 10 minute video showing you some things that will help you and possible errors you may have. When you come to the website, if you're one of the people that thinks, well I need to get to emails and I've got to scroll all the way down here every time, so here it is here, if you click on the blue bar of that section, you can drag that up here and that will stay for you on the top for all time until you move it. So it doesn't matter, you log out, log back in, it is still up the top. So that way, the thing that I need most, emails, net, email, netbook it, is up the top for me. I come here, I log in. I've said it to remember my credentials. So I'm straight in. And here we have the new interface with some icons. We'll talk about them later. Right now we're just looking at semester results by subject. That's what you need for all of them. Don't worry about the rest. It shows you all the subjects I teach. And I'm able to enter any of these results that I want. I'll go to one that I haven't entered anything for, so down here. These guys shouldn't have anything entered. So I click on the edit button and it takes me directly to my class. So I have not had to enter any codes from any timetables to get here and I'm ready to start typing in my results. What I have here is the entire class shown in this format. No going in and out of different pages. At the top here, I've got my attributes. So I can see application to class, classroom behavior, organization skills. Number four is effort towards homework. Number five is punctuality to class. So they're my five attributes. And my attributes are here one, two, three, four, five. On the top here, I've got exam average. You don't enter this, it won't allow you to enter it, it'll be entered for you later. Exam mark, this one you will enter. Semester average, once again, you don't need to enter this. It'll be entered for you. And semester mark, this one you need to enter. And a grade. So I think I'm ready to start entering. I understand that. Keen-eyed people would have seen attribute number six. That's not needed. Don't panic if you put something in there. It does not matter. It is only to allow you to, when you get to the end, for the computer program to know to see into the next row. So don't worry about attribute number six. Just pretend it's not there. So I come in, I double click on exam mark because I can't enter exam average. And so I can simply type in the exam mark I want. I press the tab key, it moves out of that field but nothing seems to happen. That's going to have moved into semester average where you can't enter anything. So you press it again and now I'm in semester mark where I can enter something. So 56, press tab, now the grade. If I'm unsure of what to enter, I can t hit the arrow and it gives me an explanation of what I can enter. So A to E, there's also U for incomplete, and there's some extra ones that if you've discussed with the head of learning error, you may wish to use because the student's been absent for a prolonged period of time, so you're giving them an estimated grade. Either way, I select the one I want. Now you don't have to do that. If I press tab, the numbers show up. And this is a lot easier. You can only enter these things that are here. So I can only enter 5, 4, 3, 2, one, leave it blank, or there is a zero up the top. And what do those mean? Well, down the bottom here, the attributes key is here. Zero means not applicable. Five is excellent. Four, three, two, one being poor. So let's come back on here, click on this grade. For this student here, there are four, a three, a four. For example, I'm saying I'm not assessing effort towards homework, so it's not applicable, so that's a zero. And then I'm entering for attribute number five, punctuality to class, there are five. I can enter something here, it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean anything, you haven't broken anything, don't panic. If you enter something here, don't care. Just leave it, don't even have to delete it. Press tab a few times, and now I'm in Ian's exam mark. So it skipped through the ones I couldn't enter, but I had to press the tab to move it to keep it moving along. So enter his mark, tab, nothing happens, it gets moved to the field I can't enter, tab again, I can enter something in here. 66. So enter this here, I want to enter the grade, I can simply enter this person got a B. And then I go 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, oops, didn't mean to enter, it doesn't matter, but I have noticed I've entered a 5 in here, and that was supposed to be a 0. So I can just go back and change it like that. Now, as I go on, it would be horrible to think 
if something had went wrong and you moved away from this page so it crashed you accidentally hit the back button something like that but if you moved away from this page you would lose this data now the more often you save the better the safer you are but you don't need to be paranoid about after each one I would normally rule of thumb say after every five people I come up the top here and I simply click on the update key and that'll simply save those so now they're locked in doesn't matter what happens those ones will not disappear you can change them feel free to go in here and change them anytime but until you update again it isn't changed if I'm finished and I want to get away from this I'm going to class now I've only had this time to enter things in I could click on the save button it does the same except it closes it off so if I come back down to finish editing this class I reopen the class whoops wrong class but just to show you it doesn't matter I start entering some grades here because I might be you've just had these guys and I went into those grades that's fine I can update or save and they're done but I go back to the class that I was working on okay so here's the class that I was up to so that updated that saved and notice before I had a lowercase b it didn't matter it's changed it but what happens if I do make a stupid mistake if I'm in here and I accidentally hit a number too many or I go through into this so I finish that and I want to go and update it tells me I've made a mistake the mark must be set to less than or equal to 100 okay I want to come back in here you can see that this number here I clearly looked down my line that one is too wrong whoops I should have done that when I go to update it this time it has no problems it saved it I can continue on if I do something even sillier I might be type a D in here because I pressed the wrong thing uh, 45 there and let's say I put my mark in here and I go now here I can't this one I cannot I can I can put a 5 in I can put a 4 in I can put a 3 in I can put a 2 in put a 1 in but if I try to type anything that's not on that list this is me typing nothing happens so we would like to get the other ones changed to be like that but at the moment this is what happens so we can clearly see this grade should have been a letter this one here if I update it I also get an error it's not a valid number I press OK I come back here and this time it's a little bit different you can see here Andrew judges where he made a mistake or I made a mistake has removed it so I can now enter the real one but this one here has left the wrong letter the wrong thing in here so I need to change that so it's fairly foolproof okay what, what happens if I was to hit the back button now the back button on most browsers is also a delete key and what that's done is take me back to the last page I was at which is the error message and that's a bit confusing right? but I think oh my goodness what's happened I go home come back into my semester broads go back to that class and if you can remember where I was it hasn't saved that so if a catastrophe was to happen I was to hit the wrong key or go to the wrong page I could lose that work so I would be updating after every five people so I can simply come back in here type in the marks that I want now it doesn't matter I don't have to finish this row if I'm called away phone rings whatever I can hit update do what I need to come back knowing full well that if I was to move away from this page I need to come back at some time later two minutes or two hours later it has saved up to where I was so update 
every five people. That would be my rule of thumb. And then you can only ever lose five people if the worst thing was to happen. Now let's say, for example, I'm finished here, I'm happy. I might have decided, oops, that one needed changing to a zero. Um, I might have had some in here. I don't even need to worry about that. doesn't matter. I've got everything right. I've put in fives for my excellent. My fours are ones and any that I'm not applicable are there. I have a quick look down. My numbers seem fine. I can do some things here like at the moment it's sorted alphabetically. I could sort it by exam. So I just clicked on the word exam and now it's sorted from top to bottom there. I can sort it by semester grade and you can see here it's sorted from there. And I can have a quick look, a quick scan and see that's the things that I expected. If I sorted by grade okay, some strange things going on here because I've skipped a grade here. So when I get to the grades that haven't been put in it's just gone alphabetically and I have skipped this grade here so I can check that. Same way here I can sort by any of these and it'll show them in order. So that doesn't change the layout of it. I can go back any time and go back to my students, 1 to 22 in this class, and that's it. So that is entering the marks. The worst thing that could go wrong is you could enter an entire class with never pressing update, and you could simply close away or move away from this page, and you would lose everything. If you update, that will not happen.